with that, it was my sincere pleasure to bring to you Melissa Armo of the Southwest.com. <laughs> you can see her screen up now. It's a nice giant chart there in the left corner. You can resize and take it down from the one X to two thirds. Please put your hands together and welcome our host for today, Melissa Armo of Southwest.com. <laughs> Can everybody hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Let me know if you can see the chart. We're going to do something a little bit different tonight. Instead of doing the lecture I had planned, I'm going to talk very specifically about what I do, which is look for gaps in the market daily. And you're getting a treat tonight because we're looking at a live gap here that's happening right now. This is the chart of Netflix. Can everyone see the chart? Let me know. Kathy can see it, okay. So some of you may have heard of me before, some of you may have not. For the benefit of those who have not, I will tell you that I started out trading in 2008, it's a long time ago now, 10 years, and I did a lot of different things when I first started out, and one day I made a lot of money in a gap, and it was a short, and actually it was Netflix, uh, which is you know one of these stocks that I very often traded and, and had a lot of luck trading. Netflix trades with a lot of momentum and a lot of volatility. At the time that I was trading it, I mean, it was so long ago, you can look here at the chart, the price of Netflix back in 2008 is nowhere, nowhere near what it was today. And this actually skewed because the stock has split because it was up over $700 in 2015 stock split. But at this time, really in 2008, 2009, when I had been trading Netflix, it was worth around in the 70s. So the stock now, had reached over 700, that was back in three years ago plus, then they did a stock split, and now the stock ran up, made brand new all-time highs just in the last two weeks, and now it had earnings tonight, and the stock is gapping down. So for those of you that do not know what a gap is, we're gonna go over that first, uh, because I think it will be very beneficial for you to see uh, that tonight. But I focus only on gaps. So every day in the trading room, Monday through Friday, I look in the morning in the pre-market to find what stocks are gapping, to choose what stock to trade each day, and I do prefer to short. And right now, Netflix is gapping down, okay? And I did rate this gap using my system before I got on the mic here tonight, and I'm going to talk about that. But And again, I'm going to explain what a gap is for those of you who don't know it, but um, I teach a class about once a month on how I determine what stock to trade every day and in what direction, okay? Uh, Amos, I'm not sure. I'm sitting as close to the mic as I can. Can everybody hear me? He's saying the sound is down or low. I can try to reset it here. Hold on. Uh, can everybody hear me? I reset it again. Daniel said yes. Amos, is that any better or not? Not really sure what else to do. Maybe just turn your sound up specifically in your computer if you can or something. Oh, it's the same? All right, I'm sorry. This is the best I can do. Um, anyways, getting back to what I was saying, okay, that I only really do one thing, one strategy, one system, and it's gaps. I find that if you get really good at one thing in the market, you can have success. It's not a good idea to be okay, so show or have a lot of information in the market if you want to make a lot of money because it just doesn't pay because you never really get good at anything because you're constantly doing different things all the time every day whereas I'm constantly doing the same thing over and over and over every day and for 10 years so that's a long time when you consider the fact that I'm only doing one specific thing okay and I'm mainly short now it's not that I will never go long but I do prefer to short all right so one thing I want to review that you understand my strategy is gaps, and there's a lot of people out there that talk about gaps, but they don't really talk about them in an appropriate way. Now, what do I mean? 
people look at gaps incorrectly. And a lot of people, when they're looking at charts using technical analysis, even regular traders that trade based on technical analysis, like buying support and using moving averages, a few of those I have on this chart here is the daily chart. It's a daily chart of Netflix uh, that we're looking at here, going back since January. But gaps are very important. And that's why you really should know how to read them correctly so that you can make money. Because if you take the position correctly in the right direction, in the market, you can make money. And if you don't, you're gonna lose. It's, it's really that simple, but you have to be able to predict. I actually get up every morning with that mindset that I'm gonna predict where something's gonna go. And I'm gonna walk you through that a little bit here tonight, okay? Obviously, you can't learn my system unless you take the class. The class is this weekend. Since I'm not showing a PowerPoint slide of Kathy, you can put my information in there. You can email me at melissa.thestockswish.com if you wanna sign up for the class. It's July 21st and 22nd, nine to five. And the cost of my class is 5,500 US dollars. If you want to sign up, you must email me for the information. If you want to trial for the room this week, you can email me as well, okay? But what you would learn in my class is how to find the stocks each morning before you trade to short or go long. But I prefer to short, okay? So I'm looking for shorts. So the class this weekend is focusing on the shorts. Now I focus on shorting what? Stocks that are gapping. So the principle or the concept behind the system is I'm looking for selling action, institutional selling, big selling, okay? And then I'm trying to determine not only where the big selling is, but also will it continue? Because the only way, like if you wanted to get up tomorrow morning, and I'm not telling you to do this, but I'm saying, if you wanted to get up tomorrow morning and trade Netflix, what would you do? You only have two choices to make money in Netflix tomorrow. You can go long or you can short it. So it would be a good idea if you knew what to do, if you wanted to trade it, why? Because Netflix, you know, obviously is gonna have a big move tomorrow. The stock normally has a big move in any day anyways, especially after the earnings, the stock's gonna have a big move and the question is, is it up or is it down? You will be able to make money if you get the direction right. And once again, if you don't, guess what? You'll lose. So the name of the game in trading and to be successful as a trader is to get the direction right, okay? Everybody with me so far? Now I'm going to just go over here with you what a gap is, very basic analysis, but a gap is the difference between the close and the open. Now right now we're in the after hours time, it's, it's called the post market, it's 4.38 Eastern time, but the market just closed a little bit ago. And I'm just gonna plop it up here and this is a five minute chart. So the five minute chart here of Netflix shows you that it closed today, this is the close of its stock. 443. So that's the closing price of Netflix today at four. Boom. Now it's not trading there right now. How do I know? Because I have the pre-market or post-market activity little clicked here in a checky box. You can take it on or you can take it off. So if I took it off, I'd see the same thing as I saw on this one. Now I want to see the gap, so I put it back on. Boom. And there you have it. Okay, so this is happening live. The earnings came out and the stock is trading down, and I can see it trading down. How do I know? This jiggy is moving, and you can see this even here. I'm gonna blow this up. This is a one minute chart. So every bar here is one minute. Boom, so this is 406, 407, 408, okay? So you see the price of Netflix is what? Well, it's not $400.43 like it closed at. It's at where? Here, this guy is moving. 344.54, and it's still moving now, okay? So time of the day is 439. So what is Netflix doing? It's gapping. It's a live gap. It's gapping down. What do I mean? I mean from where we close until where we're trading right now, the price is lower. And it's not a smidgen. It's not a baby. It's, it's you know, almost 60 bucks lower. Got it? So this is, this is taking a plummet right now live as we are sitting here we're watching it this could go on all night and this will go on tomorrow morning and god knows where it will be because actually you have the post market last for several hours and then tomorrow morning you have the pre-market open and i want to show you something too this is dragging the whole market down so right over here is the qqqs i'm also going to look at the spy these are the market indices which i watch okay and this is down tonight too. These are all down tonight too. And so is the sector overall. 
Apple, down tonight. Amazon, which made new highs today, down tonight. Okay? I didn't look at Facebook. Let's look at that. So the Netflix earnings came out, pulling the whole sector down. Let's look at this one here. So a gap is the difference between the close and the open. You can see them at night. You can see them in the morning. You can see them whenever they happen. They can happen any time of night. They can happen any time in the morning. They can happen any time between 4 and 9.30. Boy, this is taking a while to load here. Yeah, this is down. Not as down as much as some of the others, but this is down. Okay, any questions so far? This is still falling. Look. So what would you learn if you came and wanted to learn my trading method? You would learn how to find Netflix. You would learn how to find whether or not Netflix is going to do what? Tomorrow morning. Rally or fall? Because that's how you're going to make money. Boom, that's it. Okay? So we can all agree that Netflix is down tonight and it's falling right now. Obviously, if you had taken a position short into the close at like 358 and shorted even 100 shares of Netflix, you'd be up thousands of dollars. But no one knew where the, where the earnings would go. No one knew at all. And if you'd shorted it right before the close at 400 whatever, the stock could have ran up to 500 and you'd be down a crap load of money. So you can't do that. So you have to wait, wait until the stock gaps. So I'm not getting a position until I see the gap. Does everyone understand that? But after you see it, after it's there, after it's live, after it's there, okay, then you go through a process, which is what I teach in my class. It's a 26 point rating system where I will rate it. I will rate the gap. And then I will determine if it's a long or a short. Now, here's the thing with Netflix right now. I have no idea if the stock is going to open at 9.30 tomorrow morning at 3.43.48 or whatever it's trading at right now. And why? Because the stock moves so big and so fast. This stock could sell off 30 more points by tomorrow morning and look completely different, or it could rally 30 more points by tomorrow morning and look completely different. So what I usually do is wait until the morning. You can look at stuff at night, depending on the time zone you're in. I'm in Eastern, Eastern time zone in New York, but you can look in the morning or at night if it helps you. But even if you would sit down right now, analyze this, figure it all out, if you had done the class, you'd still have to double, triple check it in the morning because this is a stock that moves a lot and it could look very different. Everybody with me so far? Now, how would there be different ways that you can make money? So say you go through it. Say you would determine that you think it's a short. Well, how are you going to make money? Well, this is an expensive stock, so it's an interesting example because if you take my class and learn in the class, you'll learn how to take entries to day trade it. You could day trade Netflix, but it is very expensive. So another way to trade Netflix would be what? Doing an option in it. If the stock is rates well tomorrow morning, which I don't know if it's going to, but if it does, you could buy a put in Netflix which is essentially like shorting it down to a certain number and you don't have to worry about buying power margin. So that's another way to use the system as well. You can use the system for options. You can use the system to day trade actively. But when you day trade, you take a position. The position costs you per your buying power margin. For example, you know, 100 shares of Netflix is going to cost you even that's not even a thousand shares and a thousand shares really is not a big position but a stop in netflix is something that is probably going to be kind of big as well anybody have any questions so far i'm going to look at the gap from friday that's all i have to say on netflix right now i'm going to pull up a chart from friday friday was wells fargo but does anyone have any questions about netflix does everyone understand what a gap is? Because you're looking at a live gap right now. This is very significant. And the nice thing about trading gaps is they have big moves, they have fast moves, they have volatility, they have momentum, they have volume. And as a trader, as an active trader, and this is whether you do options or whether you day trade the position as an equity, you want to trade stocks that move. That's the only way you're going to make money. And you want to trade stocks that have volume too, because you don't want to be caught in a position. You don't want to be stuck in a position and not get filled in or not get filled out. Or even if you put the stop, everybody with me? 
Hello, is anybody there? <laughs> Am I talking to myself and Netflix alone? Because no one's writing anything. This is either a quiet bunch or you're all mesmerized by Netflix. <laughs> and there's a bigger chart of that. All right, I'm going to pull up what we did Friday. But this is a very quiet group. Let's talk about more practical terms here. Wells Fargo, this is a trade from Friday. Wells Fargo at earnings Friday morning. So this was today. I'm going back to Friday, 7.13. <clears throat> Everybody see it? This is Wells Fargo. Say you wanted to day trade, say you wanted to do this, say you wanted to do it for part-time income, a little bit of money, say you wanted to do it every day, say you wanted to pay your bills doing this. In fact, let me just take off today so you don't get confused. This was Friday, Wells Fargo. So Wells Fargo closed here, and what did it do? It gapped down. So don't look at this, what this did in here. Just look at the gap itself. The stock closed the night before on Thursday night at 56.03, boom. Gap down in the morning where? Opened at, it opened down, it opened at 54.74, okay? In this tail is selling action, which is all of this. Do, 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 do. This is all happening here. So all of this movement down is selling. That's what's making the big move down in the tail that's being formed here in the morning. This was Friday. So Friday in the trading room, we did Wells Fargo. I rated the gap in the morning, rated as a short. So we did a short in here and we got the drop. Do you see here how this fell? This is all that you need to do every day. Every day if you could capture any percentage of a move of this, whether it's 30%, 50%, 100% of the drop down of a selling action in a move, which, which, which you don't capture all the move. We don't get out of the low every day, but any percentage you get in here is profit. So your goal every day, if you come and want to learn my method and be with me in the room, is to capture this. Boom, 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 boom. You take it, get out. You take it, get out. You take it, get out. Okay? And if we do Netflix tomorrow, I don't know if we will. I do not. But that is what we would look to do in the same thing. Okay? That's all you need to do every day. So I'm focusing on the morning, I'm focusing on the first half an hour of the day, I'm focusing on the big move, I'm focusing on a quick move. I want to get in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm not an investor. And if you are an active trader, you're in and you're out. And I focus on one stock, one pick per day. Sometimes I do a retake if the first trade doesn't work. Like say Wells Fargo, if it had failed, we would have retaken it. But it worked, okay? And the idea is, to find what's gonna follow through in the selling action if you're shorting, or what's gonna follow through in the buying action if you're going long, okay? Does everyone understand? Either everyone understands every single solitary thing that I'm saying, or <laughs> you don't because I'm not, I'm not getting any questions. Let's look at another one here. This was Thursday. LB was a gap that happened on Thursday. So you see LB, okay, again, it was a gap. Stock closed here the night before, closed at 36.77, boom. Open in the morning here on the 12th at what? 34.29. You see here how this sold off. In fact, this sold off all day. This was one you could have traded several times actually. Followed through the next day. Even still looks weak today. This is 7.16. So this was uh, fr Friday and then this was today, Monday. Do you see this is selling? See it? So you want to short a stock like this. You don't want to buy it, but you need to know that this is going to continue lower to short it on the day. Otherwise, if it rallies, fills the gap or holds support, you're not going to make money. 
And that is going to be a very interesting thing to see what happens with Netflix tomorrow. Again, I have no idea where the stock is going to open at 930. That's so far a long way from here from now because of this, the way this stock trades. But this is what you would learn from me. And I'm telling you, this is how you make money. If you can find and figure out the time of the day to play the stock, the right entry to take it, the right pick, to know that it's going to go up or down, you can make money. And you're taking it and getting it, and you're getting in and out, in and out, in and out. That's all that you have to do. And the amount of money that you're risking, you're, you determine it by your share quantity of the share size that you're deciding yourself based on the size of your account. So for example, say you want to risk $500. You'd be looking to turn over that $500 one time minimum per day. Say you risk $300. You're looking to turn that over $300 one time per day, okay? That's your goal. Now, some days you will make more, some days you will make less. It's, it's the idea, though, that your goal is that. So say you take a trade and you're risking 50 cents, okay? You are looking to try to make 50 cents or close to 50 cents. Got it? Let's go back and look here again. Same time period, 712. This is the LB. Look at this. Nailed this one. Just this was an it once again a just a terrific call. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? You take it, you short it. Take it, short it. Boom. But you gotta know. You gotta know. I'm very aggressive when we're doing these trades. Very aggressive. Very aggressive. But I have the conviction. I know. And how do I know? Because ahead of time, beforehand, I'm looking at the gap and I'm determining at night or in the morning, way before 9:30 what I want to do. I have a plan of action. The plan of action is set. I know how much I want to risk. I know what I wanted to do. I know what area I wanted to hold. I know the targets. I know the resistance. I know the support. I know the gap rating. I know all of that. Okay. So I know all of that ahead of time and I'm not even stressed out about it because just like Netflix, I have if I wanted to do this, which I'm not going to determine now for the reasons I told you, it's so there's like this could look so different, you know, in, you know, 15 hours from now or whatever, how many hours it is till 9.30 tomorrow morning. But the point is though that you, you're you not in a rush. So many people wait until the open to determine what to do, scan, 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 scan for half an hour, scan for an hour, scan, 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 looking what they're doing, what's supposed to look at. They have no plan of action before the open. I have a plan of action before the open. I like this, this, and this. I've got them all rated. I have all the numbers figured out. I know what I want to do with them. And then I watch them to determine if they're going to set up. I don't know if they're going to set up. So I don't take any positions in the pre-market like LB. I wasn't in this at 8.30. I don't know what this is going to do at 8.30. I know what this is going to do once I watch it after the open. Okay, and that's also how you can contain your risk. And that's gonna be one of the pickly poos of Netflix tomorrow, like for example, wherever it's at in the morning, wherever I rate it, one thing I know for sure, this is gonna have a lot of volume in it in the pre-market, okay? So there are, in fact right now, there are people that are trading this right now that are in this. I am not and I would never be in this right now, but I'm telling you there are traders in this stock right now. Some are buying it, some are selling it, okay? And some then will be in it tomorrow morning. Some will be buying it. Some will be selling it. Okay. But I don't look at fundamentals. I look at technicals. It's advanced technical analysis in the gap. And that's what I teach in the class. But, you know, fundamentally, whatever they said in the, I didn't read the whole jiggy, something about they didn't have as much subscriber growth, whatever, whatever fundamentally they said about Netflix, some people would say, ah, oh, this chart is Good, this chart is strong, this chart is in an uptrend, Netflix is a good buy. Then some people will read the reports on the earnings and say, oh no, this isn't a good buy anymore, this doesn't look good or this is lower. So you see how everybody has a different uh, opinion. I don't go by opinions, I go by, boom. I'm looking at the price of Netflix right now or tomorrow morning before we trade it. If we trade it at all, I don't know, because again, I don't know where this is gonna be tomorrow morning. But I look at the price of something in the pre-market before I trade it, and I rate it based on the price action. 
So there's no, well, I like it, well, I don't like it. No, I use technical analysis and I use that information to help me determine if the stock is going to continue to fall or if it's going to get bought because it's very well could get bought tomorrow or it might keep selling off, in which case then we want to short it, okay? It's not based on opinion. It's based on using the price action, using the numbers. Does that make sense? So it's not as subjective as saying, well, fundamentally, I think Netflix has good growth. Boop, ba doop, ba doop, ba doop. You know, all the stuff that people talk about on TV. It's not about that. When you're trading, you know exactly right now, Netflix is trading and it's moving, but it's trading at 346.39. You know that. We can, there's no opinion on that. That's where the stock is, or in that range. It's trading in this range really ever since it fell off a planet you know, an hour ago, here was four o'clock, it's been trading in this range, let's just say between 342 and 346-ish. It's been trading in this range, mm -mm -mm. ever since it had the big drop. That we know, and we can see where it's at right now, and that's not disputable. It's a fact. So when you train based on price action, when you, when you learn how to analyze it correctly, that's when your mindset becomes so much better than trading, and you don't feel like you are throwing darts to the board when you're trading. You feel like you have a reason to say, oh, I see what's happening here. I see the buying coming in. I see the selling coming in. I see it's gonna continue. I see it's not gonna continue. I see the price that it's trading at. I see it moving higher or I see it moving lower. And you use those facts and that information from the price, which everybody that's got a live chart can see right now, you all can see it, okay? It's not about, fundamentals or opinions necessarily as far as that goes so it gives you a much more intelligent way to trade and that's why i like trading based on technical analysis but it's advanced technical analysis because i'm looking at the gap which is something that not everybody does and a lot of people that do it do it wrong eclipse trader said it makes sense does anyone else have a question i thought somebody had a question there kathy but it didn't print Um, what else was I saying? Does anybody have any questions? If you're a long-term investor, that's a very different mindset than being an active trader. It's a very different mindset. First of all, your time horizon, um, you know, is completely different. Okay. And then also your risk is too. So it's very, very different when you're looking out long-term investing versus active trading. And, and you know, a lot of people are stuck in that mindset of long-term investing, even though they want to be day traders because, because everybody was taught, oh, buy low, sell high, you know, buy the dips. But that doesn't work for active, active, active trading because if you're an active trader, you got to get in, you got to get out with the profit, you got to get in out with the cash before the market closes. And the market closes at four. No ifs, ands, or buts. Um, K3LG, that's a very long name. Um, how do you can determine if a gap down will continue down and bounce up in the gap? That's what I was trying to say to you earlier. It's not a simple boom like that. I go th through 26 points. It's a worksheet I go through every morning for every single stock that I want to rate. That's what you would learn in the class with me. It's, it's a 16 hour class. So that is how I determine it. There's 26 points, I'm not looking for a perfect score. I'm looking for 20 or more. I'm looking for 20 or more. So if it's an 18, 19, it's 50, 50 chance of working or failing. 20 or more, I feel confident with the system that it's a high percentage chance of working that it will follow through. If it rates under 20, the rule is don't do it. Now, I will tell you right now, I did rate this before we started talking here. I rated it right after it fell off a planet. And I don't want you to take this by gold because I don't know where this is going to be tomorrow morning. But I'm telling you, if Netflix opened right now, this second, if it was 930, which it's not, it's 5 o'clock, the stock rated 20 points. You could short it. But it's not 930. I have no idea where this is. This could drop more, this could rally, it would change the whole rating. But I did rate it at four, because I'm like, oh, I just wanna see what this rates. And around four o'clock, it was 20 points, which means you know, we'll be doing something in this tomorrow. But it may not open here. It may open down, 
and it may change the rating. It may not. It might get better. It might open up and it might get better. I don't know. It's like saying what if, end, or but. It's just the same reason I, I said to you, I don't know where Netflix was going to gap. I couldn't tell if it was going to gap up or gap down. I didn't know what they were going to say in the, on their earnings report. No one knows. It's insider information. But once the gap occurred and I saw it falling off a planet, one, I knew that would drag the whole market down and the whole tech sector, which has been the only thing lifting the market, which is exactly what's going to happen. So the market's going to gap down tomorrow. That I know for sure, too. And Netflix is going to gap down. One thing I can tell you, and this I know for sure, Netflix will open lower tomorrow. I don't know where, but it will. And so will the market. And so will all the tech sectors. But whether they will fall or not will determine the rating in the morning. But tonight, this is 20 points. So if it was the open, we'd be looking to short this. And it's probably a better put because of the price but I have no idea what the put's gonna open up tomorrow. So, you know, you could look at the close of the puts tonight, it's gonna be nowhere near, nowhere near what it's gonna be tomorrow morning because nobody knew. Nobody knew what this was gonna do until after four and then the options, you know, had closed. Um, I don't know when the next class is gonna be. I do classes once a month, AG. It's earnings season, it's busy time, it's a good time to trade. This is, I'm telling you, this week and next week is the busiest every day. There's gonna be stuff to do like crazy. Now, next week, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, and with something that's really, really weird, guess what? And Google, they're not all the same night, which is gonna make crazy, crazy volatility next week. Usually, and I don't know if you people know this or not, but I'm telling you, usually, a lot of the big names report the same night. Like, for example, Amazon and Google always report toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They're not next week, which is really weird. So, like, every day next week is going to be nuts. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a wild ride. And I did predict that July would be a wild, uh, wild month, and I'm not wrong. So, July is going to be a great time to trade in August. I do not have the calendar for August classes yet. I know I'm doing the class this weekend. My own schedule has been crazy because of doing television plus trading the room, everything else. It's, you know, I'm only one person. So I'm taking the time to talk to you here tonight. If you want to do the class, do it this weekend. I don't have August schedule. If you're on my marketing list, you'll find out when I do it, whenever I get my TV schedule for August. Uh, risk to reward ratio. That's what I was saying earlier, K3LG. I'm looking for one over. So if you are, if you can afford to risk a thousand bucks, fifteen hundred dollars, what's your what, what? How much money are you looking for? You're looking for one over. You're looking for fifteen hundred bucks. If you can afford to risk it. If you can't risk what you can afford. But the difference between making five hundred dollars a day or fifteen hundred dollars a day is what? It's the same trades. Everybody in this other room is taking the exact same trades as me. Okay, now everybody gets filled a little bit differently, but the size of everyone is different. Some people have accounts that have five grand in a prop account. They are not risking $1,500 a trade. Some people have a hundred grand in, in a retail account. They are risking $1,500 a trade, okay? There are some days that some, some traders email me that they've made as much as me and sometimes more because they've held a little bit. I mean, LB is actually a great example. Let's go back where i mean i definitely definitely probably got out of this a little bit too early but i mean you know i had things to do i forget if i was on tv or not last week no i was i was on that day so you know i like to trade the morning i like to be out early that's me that's my personality plus when i'm out and i'm up and the goal is in i'm up and i'm done and it's in you know if you want to do this and you rely on it you count on it or you you need the money to pay your bills or whatever when you know you're up you're up and if you don't get out then you might not keep it. I don't know if that makes any sense. So I know sometimes it's good to hold longer. And sometimes I wish I had. Sometimes I go back and say, oh, I could have held it a little. But you know what? Every once in a while, you have to say, you know what? No picky targets. If your job is take it, get out, take it, get out, take it, get out, take it, get out, then you do it. My goal, my job, the way I look at what I do is, number one, find the best stock to trade every day. Number one, that's what I do. And I do it extremely well. Number two, Find the perfect entry. Every single stock that I trade, every single one, every time, I do that very well. I don't think there's anybody actually better at trading the one-minute chart than me. I, I'm just really good at it. Reading live price action in seconds, milliseconds, less than that, and then calling the trades live in the room and doing them. And then three, 
I have the targets, but you know what? Sometimes I don't hold the target. Sometimes you're up and you're up and you're out. And here, this is a good example because this bar, when I called this trade, we did this one here, this was so fast, so quick. I had no expectation that this, I just wanna show you this is, here, we did the trade right here. This bar, higher the bar is 34.21, lower the bar is 33.67, okay? So this bar was like 50 cents, just whoop, you know, like that. Like just pretend you this was you and pretend that happened, you're up, like say you shorted it, where I called the trade and you got in. You got filled, you got in, you did it, you got the stop in, you did it, you're up so fast, so quickly, you're like, woo. I mean, instinctually, you might get out. Now you might have a target of 33, which we did. I mean, the target of this was 33 and this went there. Now I'm just gonna show you here, this did go there. It took right into 10 o'clock to get there. But at 9.32, okay, if you did this trade, you were up a lot right as soon as you took it immediately, basically your goal for the day in less than 60 seconds. So you have a choice. So I don't usually move my stops. If you do the trade and you wanna do something different than me and you were up this much quickly and you wanna move it and put the stop at break even to try to get it down to a bigger number, fine. But know that if you do that and the trade reverses, guess what? Then you're not gonna make anything at all. So the consistency, okay, the consistency for me is finding the pick, rating the gap. That's what you learn in the system, taking the entries. That's what you learn. I'll teach targets in the class. I teach and we go over them. I give you the targets in the room. But I'm telling you, the, the one of the biggest, 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 biggest problems that traders have is being pigs. They want and believe and actually think that the biggest trade in the world is gonna come to them and they're gonna make all this money and somehow all the losses they ever had, ever trading in their whole life and every class they ever took that they never made any money with and they didn't learn a thing, they're all gonna get it. And it's all gonna come in one big trade if they could just get that one big in. But it's just, I'm telling you, that's not reality. Reality is you chunk it out. Do, 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 do. And that's how you do it. And every once in a while, you will take a trade and I will say, this is amazing. And it will open and swish or do something crazy. And I'll say, we're holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, holding it, or it'll just fall, it'll just fall off a planet. Like, I mean, honestly, Netflix, and I, again, I do not know where this opens tomorrow. So I do not know, but I'm telling you, I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix opened and swooshed, swooshed down, okay? I don't know, but I'm telling you, it's gonna be worth watching. So that's something else you learn in the class. But the point is that every once in a while, you're going to get a big trade. It's just going to fall into your lap. But you don't force it because that's not really what this whole thing is about. It's not about really getting rich. And I don't consider making $1,500 a day rich. Of course, I live, in a, I live in Manhattan. So I have a different perspective than a lot of people But you know about money. But I'm telling you that whatever you're willing to risk, you're looking to flip it over one to one. It's dependent on how much you know as far as your learning ability to grasp the concepts in the class and then also follow me and listen to what I say. I would not be a pig no matter what. Even if you were trading with me for a year, I wouldn't be a pig. But there are days when there are people that definitely hold some of these trades down and they have a little more patience or they take some out and hold the rest. And that's up to you, okay? Either way, you gotta follow the system. The system says 26 points. You gotta follow it and you can't deviate from it. And there's no deviation if you wanna do well. And if you don't have a system to follow, then, then the lesson tonight is find one. If you wanna take my class, you can learn mine, follow me. But if you're trading arbitrarily every day, scanning and scanning and scanning and some days going long and some days going short and some days doing gaps and some days buying gap fills and some days doing this and some days buying support and some days shorting, some days going with the market, some days going with the sector. You're all over the place over the results. I can tell you, I know that. I know a lot of traders that have been had the business for six years plus. I've talked to umpteen million people. And it, I'm never, never, I don't think I'll ever be not surprised at the things that people say to me. I mean, it very clicked, it clicked very quickly, uh, it clicked very quickly for me when I started trading. 
um, which again was a long time ago now, 10 years, 2008. But it, it, it was very, very quickly that I learned that I, I only needed one trade a day to make money. <laughs> I mean, that's all that I needed. It was like, oh, there, that's it. First of all, my commissions weren't expensive then. Second of all, you know, it was very easy to trade. It was just like magic when it would happen. And that was really all that I needed. And the days that I would continue, this was right at the beginning when I didn't, when I didn't force myself to realize that, it, I would give the money made, that I made back, <laughs> which was insanity. So, you know, I'm telling you, this sticking on one thing like white on rice, really you know being on top of it is the way to go i mean i'm just telling you it is the way to go but you do have to know what stock to look at or what to do kathy i'm getting a weird little thing with hot come can you hear me or is it timing out just got a weird circle with the arrow all right so does anyone have any other questions good questions here tonight quiet group though um, I wish I knew where Netflix was going to go by tomorrow morning. I don't. I can tell you it's going to have a wild ride. If you want a trading room trial this week, email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. I'll send you a trial to sit in Tuesday through Friday. I'll be here the rest of the week. It's going to be a busy time, busy week. If you're interested in the class, email me as well. If you have questions, I can send you the class outline to go through it. I don't know when the next class is. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm living week to week here with my schedule. Luckily, it's worked out so far. Um, this weekend, Daniel, July 21st and 22nd is the class, nine to five. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I was gonna say. So the class focuses on shorts, okay? Because we mostly short mostly the chat room you can only join if you take the class it's four hundred dollars a month if you go month to month but you must have taken the class cdk no one is in the room as a member without having learned the system because you have to be able to follow me in the trade settle quickly like i just showed you in the lb if you sign up for the year you get a discount of 30 percent and actually everyone but one person in the room is signed up for the year one person is month to month he was away for a while and just came back. So he's tippy toeing. But the idea is if you join the room, if you do the class, you take my trades, you take the calls. I'll call it boom, boom. I'll say 40 by 60 or whatever. Okay. I'm giving the pennies. I'm not giving the dollar amount. And do you see here why in Netflix that would be ridiculous? Because I would be like, you know, $410, but it wouldn't be enough time to get it out to take the trade. So you got to know, and I put it in the room, Netflix rates 20 points. Here's the target. Here's resistance. Here's what we're looking at. Here's what we're doing. And then when I call it the trade, I'm giving the first number as the entry, second one is the stop. The idea is to follow me. The idea is to do what I say. And most of the people in the room do. Some people don't. Some people don't follow me. That's on them. But I think it's very interesting now doing this for as long as I have been, you know, I'm teaching adults. It's, it's, it's very different than teaching children. Everyone is independent. And a lot of people that want to do this are independent. You're, uh, people are independent thinkers. But after a while, people start to realize, oh, this person knows what she's doing. And then they do follow me to the letter. <laughs> but, you know, I, I know there's some people that hold trades longer. In the case of LB, you see here how this would have paid. Let me go back. You see here how this would have paid. But in the case of Wells Fargo, you see how this would not have paid. So if you held this trade into the afternoon, it flipped. You got stopped. You lost. It flipped. Completely went poof. And this one here fell. So that's why focusing on what I'm doing in that time frame from 9.30 to 10, 10.15, 10 10.30 that morning is critical. That's the time we want to trade. That's the time I'm focused on. That's what I want. That's all that I want. That's all that I need. That's all that you need to. Okay. That's why I just say, listen to what I say. Look, this is down even more. Look, 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 look. This is going to break a new low right now as we're talking. I have no idea where this ends up. I, I wouldn't be 
surprised. Here's going to break 342. I would not be surprised. And again, I have no idea. And I'm not going to take any more time on this now because I'm tired. But I wouldn't be surprised if this dropped another 20 points by the morning. I mean, I don't think it's going to break 300 by tomorrow morning. But I wouldn't be surprised if it dropped down in the 320s. And you can see here right now, look, look at the volume. See in the square, top of the square with a V, 1187269. That's the volume at four. This is a 15 minute. That's the volume there. Every bar here is fat and big. Look at the bars. In fact, let's look at the one minute. I took it off. Let's see how much volume. People are trading this after hours. This is like a death trap. I would never trade the stock and the post market. <laughs> Pretty insane, but people are. Look, this one bar here. Look at this. It's crazy. 33620. This is only a one minute bar at night. Look at the volume. This is insanity. Look at that volume in that bar. I mean, this isn't the, the market's close. And look at how this puppy's going. Let's see what the biggest one is in here. Here, this is a big one. Oh, it's only 38, 21. There, 56, 865. That's a lot. <clears throat> 101, 167, 136, 115, and the first one here, 163. Here, this didn't break the low yet, but it's going to it's gonna any second. 342.26. So once you've exited your trade each day, you're out of the room? Yes. That's the plan of action. I think it works. I think it's good. Remember, day trading, you are not going, you're not looking to become a billionaire as a day trader. I mean, you do understand that. You're, you're looking to do this for money. That's it. It's you're 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 just chunking it out. It's income. It's boom boom boom. You're again two hundred grand a year, three hundred grand a year, four hundred grand a year. That's not that's not super duper rich to me. You you are gonna you're pulling money out of the market with what you can afford to risk, and that's it. And I could be risking more. I mean, maybe I'll step it up at some point, but I'm in a comfortable zone with myself right now. But the fact is that you're you you're 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 just pulling money out. If you want to get super duper rich with with the market, learn this. Do this for money and pull it out. Do options as well for money and then long, do long-term investing on the side. But when you do long-term investing, you gotta, you gotta have a bankroll that's humongous, people, okay? So pull the money out of the market that you can for income because that's what day trading is. And you can look at options the same way too. But as far as getting rich, that's long-term investing because you gotta be able to take a position, you gotta be able to hold through it you got to be able to get a big move in it. I mean, if you look at the market, I'm just going to look at the market because the market is such a great example because of the move that the market had in 2017. Power trended up. I'm going all the way back. So, you know, from the time, and I'm just looking at this, just this is so long ago now. November 2016, remember the election. If you had bought the market there, I'm just looking at the SPY, around 210, but you would have had to buy it. This is not cheap. And if you do overnight, it's either cash or two to one margin. You would have had to buy the S&P, the SPY outright at 210 and to get this move. It went straight up. You, wouldn't, you were never down any day of your life if you bought it there. And it ran right up to 284, so you would have got 74 points, assuming you would have got out. Even if you were in it today, you would have got you know 68 points, okay? You'd be up, but you had you would have had to wait for, you know, it's not two years quite yet, a year and a half for that type of profit. And you would have had to have the cash to take it and do it. So you see how that is a much different concept than what we do. But day trading can get you to that point for the money to help you do this. It can build your account to have to do this as a separate account. That's definitely true. And learning the gaps, learning how to do bullish gaps and bearish gaps can help you determine the placements for these because they will tell you that the market gapped up. The market gapped up when this when this did this and ran out. This is a gap up. Market closed here, gapped up. And if you bought this gap up that happened in the market in November 2016, the market, you, you were never, never, never down. In an overnight position, 
And that's phenomenal. So, I mean, and that may hold for the next five years. I don't know. I mean, I have no idea, but the, that could hold for the, forever, for all I know. But I'm just telling you that you would learn the gap structure to be able to take positions better for overnight. But that's not what we do every day. And the reason is because you have to be able to get the money out. If you take an overnight, you you could have said, okay, well, fine. Targets in the market overnight are 220, 225, 230, 232. I mean, you would have had all these targets, but you can't, you don't know when they're gonna get there. You do not know when they're going to get there. So you have to wait. And if you need money right away, if this is your job, if this is your livelihood, if you're doing it part-time, if you wanna buy a car, if you wanna do something else, go on a vacation, pay a bill, you can't wait until it gets to 225. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Like you got to do it and you have to take it and you need it. And so you can't wait. Even though waiting is great. Waiting is wonderful. Waiting is great. You can get rich taking, you know, long-term investing. If you know how to do it well, you can get rich, but you need a lot of money. You got to take good entries. You also have to ride the moves and the turmoil and the volatility of the market. A lot of people don't have the sweat and brains to do that or the cash behind them. So if you don't have to do that to make money, that was the point. So why not just do what is very, very easy to determine and see, which is get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out, get in, get out. And I'm telling you right now, and I'll say this one last thing and everybody go. It is so much more easy, way easier, okay, to, to, to predict, like for me to predict where something's gonna happen, like right now, the second, the next second, like the next minute, like the next, five minutes, the next half an hour. This, sometime tonight, because it's early, 522, this here in this Netflix is gonna hold the gap down, I can tell you that. And I feel pretty confident it's not gonna go over 350. I also feel pretty confident it's probably gonna break 342. Before this closes tonight, at whatever time the post market closes. So I, but I, I don't know where this opens tomorrow morning. You know, that's like I said, 15 hours away, 16 hours away. So I, I, I can tell you where I think it's gonna go like soon, but not like long term right now, the second. Do you see how it's easier to tell where someone's gonna go quickly rather than, than long term out? So like if you're looking at something and you're taking a trade, if you, if you can determine where something's going to go in seconds or minutes, then, then that's easy to trade. Do you understand? So why not take it and get out? Like, I don't know my schedule for TV for August. I know it for today. I know it for tomorrow. I know it for Wednesday. I actually don't even know it for Friday. Like, that's very far for me. But I know what I'm doing tomorrow. And that may change too. I know I'm not on tonight. Do you say like, you know, like you probably know what you're going to have for supper. It's 523. Like I know what I'm going to make for supper tonight. Okay. I don't have to go to the grocery store. I have it. I have it in the fridge. I'm having leftovers from last night. Okay. So I'm going to make dinner when I'm done here tonight. And I'm going to get ready for bed. So that I know. But I don't know what I'm going to have for supper tomorrow night. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you, you know, it's so much easier to determine what you're going to do sooner rather than later. Stocks are the same. Does that make sense? And that's why trading in quick, fast trades and getting in and out in movements based on where they're going in that moment, in the moment that you're trading them is so much more easier to determine. And that's why I look to trade this chart. Now, again, I'm not doing this in this right now, but I'm just telling you, that's why I'm looking to trade this chart. This is probably gonna break the 342 soon. I mean, I thought it was going to like 10 minutes ago, it's, it's going to. And how do I know? How do I know? I'll give you one more, just quickly answer, see if anyone can guess. How do I know, me, okay? How do I know that this is gonna break 342 tonight? How can I tell that? Like, what am I, a wizard, or how do I know that? Anyone wanna guess, quick, before Kathy kicks us out? Anyone alive? Anyone there? Anyone want to guess? Kathy's going to guess. Because <laughs> Kathy needs to make herself dinner and her cats. 
Does anyone want to guess how I know that this will break 342 this evening? Kathy. It's bouncing along the bottom. It hasn't made a higher high or a higher low. I don't really look at those things, but you're right. That's a correct statement from Amos and Eclipse Trader. Those are correct statements, but I don't really look at that. But anybody else? Any other guesses? All of those things are correct. That's not what I was thinking, but you're right. Stock patterns? What do you mean, Mike? Bigger volume of the drops? I didn't really look at that, but that might be correct too. Let's look down here. This is volume. Meh, we have a green bar here and a red bar here that looks pretty similar. Anyone else? Nobody said the answer. No one said it. And that's why all of you should take my class. Because <laughs> nobody said the right answer. <laughs>